this video, I'm going to take you through the open source cartridge reader. This is being pioneered by Sani, and I'm going to link his GitHub page in the description below. But what this excellent device will allow you to do is take the physical cartridges that you legally own, pop them in, and back them up to a ROM file right on this SD card. From there, you can put them into your computer or other backup, you can play them on an emulator, play them on a Mr. FPGA, whatever you'd like to do, they are yours. It'll also let you confirm the authenticity of the cartridge by looking at the hash. It'll let you re, um, write to uh, reproduction cartridges, which is really cool for homebrew purposes. And my favorite feature above all else is that this will allow you to read and restore the save files on your cartridges. Now up to and including the N64 generation, most of these cartridges would use uh, SRAM which is a type of save that requires constant power for preserving that data. And what the cartridges used was a little three volt button cell battery. Now it's a question of when, not if, that battery decides to die. And when it does, it's going to take your save file with it and there is no way to get that save file back. So what we can do is we can pop that cartridge in, back up that save file. If we want, we can restore or replace rather that battery with a fresh three volt battery pop that cartridge back in and restore that save file right back to the SRAM. Truly amazing. We can finally preserve those uh, hard fought battles and memories into a permanent uh, storage location. I wish I had this years ago before my Pokemon Silver cartridge decided to use all of its battery power running a real time clock and then taking my save file down with it. But you know what? All we can do is look towards the future. This will work with a variety of different cartridges, including NES, Famicom, Super Nintendo and Super Famicom, N64, Genesis Mega Drive, Sega Master System, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance. And that's just natively. Using cartridge adapters, we can use this with Virtual Boy, Wonder Swan, PC Engine, Turbo Graphics, and a variety of other systems. Truly excellent piece of hardware. It also has an N64 controller port on the side, so we can test our N64 controllers, for example, looking at the dead zone on the analog stick. And if you have a controller pack popped into that controller, we can back up and restore the save files on that controller pack because N64 controller packs did in fact use SRAM from the factory with a button cell battery. With all that said, in this video, I'm gonna take you through how to assemble and build this, how to solder this and put this together. So let's get our hardware out. And let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start with the bottom half of the open source cart reader. Now over here we have the Game Boy cartridge slot, some headers, capacitor, LED, resistor, wire, and the IDC headers. I'm not going to go through every part in detail because this is all covered on the wiki. So please go to the GitHub page and refer to the full bill of materials for what you're going to need to order right there. I like to begin with the Game Boy cartridge slot here. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab our soldering iron and I like to use the, uh, the blade style for this part of the assembly. And we are just going to wet these pads here and take our cartridge slot. Go ahead and get that in place. Make sure it's good and square. All right, looking good. And make sure all these pins are lined up here. And we are just gonna go ahead and zip this in. And we're gonna take a little bit of our no clean and just give it a bit. Next, I like to put the IDC headers on. So we're going to take these, put them right on here, flip the board over, go ahead and solder these in. While we're down here, we can go ahead and close jumper J1. T2. 
To install the switches, what we're going to do is we're going to put it in position, hold it with your finger and flip it over to the other side. And what we're going to do is we are going to go for one of the pins in the middle, because if you go for the outside ones, you'll end up burning your finger. So let's go for the inside one here, get that in position, get that nice and square. And there we are. Double check to make sure that's square on the other side, and then you can go ahead and button that up. And do the same thing for the second switch. You're probably not gonna be able to find a header that's exactly the same pin count, so what we're gonna to need to do is cut these down. So just take our flush cuts, this is the easiest way to do that. Make sure you count the right number of pins back. So on this one, we need to delete four pins, and on this one, uh, we need to delete two. So we're gonna take that, we're gonna count back four pins, and we're gonna get as close as we can to that fourth pin. We don't wanna to cut too far over because then we're going to ruin this header. So right about here, we're gonna cut that. It's a little sloppy. There we go, look at that. And now we have the right size female pin header that'll just drop right in. To install the pin headers, what you wanna do is you want to tack one or two pins right at the very end so I'll start with two, there we go. And we're going to want to turn this sideways, make sure it's good and square. You can see this actually slightly off. So we will apply a little bit of heat and get that good and squared up. Looking good. And we can flip it around to the other side and do the same thing over here. Looking good. With both sides tacked, we can go ahead and do the full array of pins and install all of the other headers as well. Excellent. All of our female pin headers are installed. To install the capacitor, it's very simple. We just match it up with the silk screen on the board, negative to negative. Push it in. And solder the through hole connections. And once that's in, we can clip the legs. To install our LED, you're going to notice, and this may be hard to focus on, but there is a big metal piece and a small metal piece. And the big metal piece is connected to the short leg. That is the cathode. Easy way to remember that is cats are small and they're very, very negative. So we can take that and we can put the cathode through the square through pad here. Push that through. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to solder just one of these. And spin this around to make sure that's still flush. You see how it fell out just a little bit? So we can melt that and just push that in with our fingernail. 
There we go. For our resistor, we just want to bend these legs back and feed our resistor through from the front side of the board. Make sure that resistor is sitting flush. That looks pretty good. So now we can go ahead and solder the other leg. And with those both installed, we can clip the legs. The very last step on the bottom board is we are going to take a female jumper. And I've already, uh, already stripped the end here. We're going to apply a little bit of solder to that just to tin the end. And we are going to install it right in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-tin this. And then we're going to feed this right through this via. Just like that. Let it cool and you can give it a very light tug to make sure it's in. And we're done. Next up, we need to open up our clock generator. So let's get this out of the bag. Now we are not going to need these, so we can set those aside and just toss them if you don't need them. And all we need to do is take this header, insert it just like that, and we are going to solder that in place. Now you want to make sure that this is square, so what we're going to do is let that cool for a moment and then turn this over and take a look at that. You see how that's a little bit out of square? So we can just take our finger and put it on, make sure you put it on a pin that you're not going to be soldering on so you don't burn yourself. And then just give that a little touch with your tip and make sure that it's squared up just like that. Perfect. So now we can go ahead and solder the rest of those pins. Looking good. We have to make one small modification to our Arduino Mega. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our blade tip soldering iron and we are going to apply it to this fuse right here until that starts to melt and then use our tweezers to pull that right off. Just like that. We no longer need that fuse so we can go ahead and discard that. Um, but we do need to apply some fresh solder to that pad so let's do that. We now need to take a male to female jumper wire and what we're going to do is we're going to cut this roughly in half, it doesn't need to be perfect, and take our wire strippers, we're going to use the male side for this, and just remove a very small amount, it doesn't have to be a lot. We are going to tin the end of this, there we go, and what I like to do is I like to trim this back just a hair because we really don't need much, and then solder this right to this pad and that's all there is to it. All right now we can open up our maker base the LCD module. Let's take this out. Uh, we are going to shorten these ribbons but we're not going to do that just yet so let's just keep those handy. Take out the module itself and on the reverse side you're going to see a open jumper here. So what we need to do is we need to close that jumper and what that's going to do for us is that is going to back feed the 3.3 volts that is generated on this board back to our cart reader so that we can use that 3.3 volts for N64. So let's go ahead and close that jumper. Now what I like to do is I like to take a little bit of a resistor leg here. We're going to cut that down. This just makes closing the jumper uh, that much easier. And we are going to apply some fresh solder on here to both of these pads, just like that. Let's take this jumper, put that on here, 
and close that guy right down. With soldering on the lower board and the associated components complete, we can go ahead and assemble this and program our Arduino. So let's go ahead and connect power and make sure this is a good solid connection. Uh, now when we install this, we wanna make sure that none of these wires are gonna get caught. So let's make sure that those are out of the way and all the pins are aligned. We can go ahead and push that down in, there we go. Make sure that's nice and snug with the USB port facing out. And we can take our clock generator, although not completely necessary yet. We can just make sure that mounts up. And our IDC cables here, uh, they have a extrusion on that side. So that lines up with these slots. Just go ahead and push those in real simple. And we can take our LCD module, uh, left goes to left, right goes to right. This needs one twist and just plugs into the back, just like that. All right, everything is assembled. Let's go ahead and get this programmed. All right, the first thing we need to do is navigate over to our SD card and make sure that it is formatted for FAT32 and ours is good to go. So we can go ahead and open that up and then open up the uh, files you downloaded from GitHub. Version 12.3 is the most recent as of this taping. And we are going to copy all of these SD card files into the SD card folder. Uh, right in the root folder there. All right, with the SD card set up, we can go back over to the package and then open up the drivers folder. If you haven't already installed the drivers, you're going to need to do that by running setup.exe. I've already done that, so I'm gonna move on to the Arduino step. We're gonna open up arduino.exe. And once that's done, we're gonna make sure that our sketch is loaded by going to file, sketchbook, and load cart underscore reader. From here, we move over to tools, make sure that we have the right board selected. We want Arduino Mega or Mega 2560. And then your port, I'm on COM3, yours may be different. If you're not sure, you can go over to Device Manager and confirm which port you need from there. All right, let's move down into the code. You can see here, we need to define hardware five by making sure that's not commented out. And there's lots of other things you can tinker with. Feel free to check out the GitHub for more information. And then lastly, we just need to upload it by clicking this button here. Now, please be patient. This does take a little bit of time. And that's all there is to it. With the Arduino programmed, it's now time to move on to our first test. So let's grab our SD card with the associated files and pop that in to the LCD module. We are going to take our game, make sure this is off first. Um, I'm grabbing Tetris for Game Boy here. Pop that in. Make sure this is set to five volts and go ahead and turn this on. And if everything's working properly, you should be greeted with a screen that looks something like this. So we are going to select Game Boy, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and look at that. We've identified our game. Everything's working properly. If you'd like, you can continue and try to read the cart just to make sure that everything is 100% and we're looking good. With that out of the way, we can move on to the top half. All right, so now we can start working on the top side. We're going to want to identify the silk screen that says SNES cartridge slot, and we are going to want to grab our SNES cartridge slot. Make sure this is facing you. You don't want to install this on the back side. It's an easy mistake to make. And we are going to want to line this up. And this can be a little tricky because sometimes these pins can be bent. But we're going to want to line this up and get this installed. There we go. Flip it around to the back side and we are going to solder the SNES in place. We need to install the female header for the SNES CIC that drops in right here. And now we can install our male headers. Just like the female headers in the lower board, we need to cut these down. So we need to remove two pins and four pins respectively.
the SNES slot and our headers mounted and soldered, we are good to install all of the other slots. Let's do it. install this resistor. Putting together the SNES CIC is very easy. Now I ordered this pre-programmed. Uh, the information on how to do that is in the wiki, but to assemble this, we just match up this notch with the notch on the silk screen and just push these pins through the uh, through hole connections here on the board. There we go. We're gonna spin that around and we are going to solder that in place. We are going to take our capacitor and push that through and solder that in place as well. Grab our flush cuts and give those legs a snip. And then lastly, we have our header and that's going to drop in just like that. Now with our lower half and our upper half of this board fully assembled as well as the CIC, we can go ahead and clean these up with some isopropyl alcohol and an ultrasonic cleaner. I have another video that goes into detail on how to do that. I'll link that in the description below. Feel free to check that out. For our next step, we have to do some cable modifications. We have the N64 extension cable and we have the IDC ribbons. We're going to need a vise, although there are other tools that can do this. The vise is uh, very effective. And what we do is we take our N64, the female side, we put it in the vise and we put it so the jaws are grabbing just the bottom here. And you squeeze this down and crack it open just like you're opening up a chestnut and this will just fall right off. Super, super easy. That's the easiest way to get these apart. And then for these IDC ribbons, we're going to want roughly five, six inches or so. It doesn't have to be perfect. We can cut that down just like that. And what we're gonna to need to do is we're going to need to take uh, some of these connectors and we're gonna to wanna to make sure that this is positioned correctly. So you're going to wanna look at the old one and we see how the extrusion's facing that way. So we're going to want to do the same thing. Extrusion facing that way. Put it in at the bottom like this. And this needs to come out. This wraps around. This comes back in at the top. And then you're going to want to inspect it to make sure that we have our cables pushing through. They, they should be rush, roughly flush with this back end here. And you can go ahead and push that down with your fingers and then put this in the vise and then carefully, very, very slowly crimp this down until it's fully mated, just like that. Back off and you should see a nice, perfectly formed connector. We're going to do the same thing with the other side and then go back in and start the assembly. All right, next up, we have to modify our N64 extension cable. So we're gonna take this apart. And we are going to get roughly about, about six inches. Doesn't have to be exact. Snip that down. And we're going to use our wire strippers. 
to take some cable off there. So you'll see there's three exposed wires. That's data, ground, and power, three volt power. And we are going to take our wire strippers again and just take just a small amount off there. And this should be our finished result. Red to power, white to data, black to ground. We begin final assembly with the bottom part of the board, the clock generator and the Arduino. We're going to take the clock generator and it gets installed right here. Like that. And then we take our Arduino and we plug in the power wire here. Make sure those are firmly seated. And when we install the Arduino, make sure the wire's clear. You don't want those getting caught in the pins. Line up the pins. And press that down in. There we go. And you should see the USB port facing out. Make sure all of your wires are clear. And there we go. Now this is not the standard shell. This is a shell that I designed myself. I wanted something to be um, more durable, nicer looking on a shelf with a really nice fit and finish. I wanted a solid floor, solid walls, you know, fully enclosed shell. So I designed this and uh, they will be posted for free on printables. Um, and I also will offer these for sale in my store if you don't have a 3D printer. Putting this together is all really easy. We take the bottom part here and uh, we take switch side first and we drop that in down like that. And there we go. And then we take our M2 by 10 screws and our standoffs. And we're going to insert the screw from the back right here. Push that through like that. So you can see that poking through in there. And then take our standoff and we're going to tighten this in all seven locations. Now you can see we have all seven screws and standoffs installed. At this point, we can install uh, these two ribbons. So we're gonna take these and we're gonna feed them through right underneath here and just push them down in. Now we can install the top half. Before we do, we need to clip the wings on the NES connector. So we're just gonna use our flush cuts and then just pop these off. There we are. We want it to look like that. And we're going to take this N64 whip and we are going to push it down right in here, just like that. And when we put this all together, the N64 cable needs to go in between the two IDC connectors. So it's gonna get pushed down in like that. Um, otherwise it might get caught and you're gonna have trouble pushing this all together. Now this is a delicate operation lining up these pins. You wanna make sure that all of your pins are straight and nothing is bent and everything is lined up before you push it together. So let's go ahead and mate the two together. Next step is to install the LCD module into the faceplate. So we can remove this remove after washing sticker that can go away. Uh, we have to take off the dial so that just pops right off the front. And then we are going to take it SD side first, insert and drop right in. Now we're going to use our plastic washers right here and our short M2 screws. Uh, these are uh, six millimeter in length and we are going to take four of these and secure this at the corners, making sure that the screen is centered as we do this. With the four screws in the back installed, we can reinstall the knob onto the front 
and we can mate the faceplate with the rest of the assembly. Now this isn't too difficult. We're going to take our N64 connector and we are going to pop it through. This will take a little bit of force, um, but it will clip right in. So get everything lined up like this. And then what we're gonna do is just push this in. And you'll hear a pop. There we go, nice and secure. We can push this cable out of the way. Uh, these two ribbons that we shortened up earlier, we're gonna do the same thing where we have to twist it and connect it. Left goes to left, right goes to right. Uh, now I have melt-in brass knurled nuts that have already been installed. There's four total, uh, one here, one on the other side, and then two on the bottom of the faceplate. Uh, you're gonna have to put those in in advance as part of the shell package. Um, and then the screws come in from the sides and the bottom. With the four faceplate screws installed, one on each side, and then two on the bottom in the front up here, we can move on to installing the top plate. So it goes on just like this, drops right in, very simple, and there you go. Now we install these seven screws right here. We're gonna use M2 by 10 millimeter screws. And last but not least, we're going to take some rubber bumpers. I like to use six of them. So we're going to install in each corner. And then two more, about one third of the way down. And that's it. We have finished our open source cartridge reader with a fully enclosed shell, nice beautiful construction, and we're ready to back up our ROMs and back up our save files. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.